Hi, my name is Cliff Hastings, the co-author of the Hands-On Start to Mathematica book. If you're starting your journey with Mathematica, this short video will teach you the fundamentals, including how to create your first notebook, enter your first calculations, and generate graphics. We do have live one-hour seminars available for free for, the, for you that you can sign up for, and they include live chat so you can ask questions if you're looking for something more in-depth. And of course, the book goes then even further and becomes a constant resource for you in the future. But today, this video will be just a quick snapshot to get you started. <clears throat> if you're just starting up Mathematica, you should see the welcome screen. To start a new notebook, click the red button. It should look like this if you're using a local desktop version of Mathematica, or like this if you're using Mathematica online. If you click anywhere on the page, it creates a horizontal cursor. This means that Mathematica is ready for you to enter something. Go to Format Style and choose a title cell and call this Hands-On Start to Mathematica. Then use the down arrow key or move your mouse to create a new horizontal cursor under your title cell and create a section cell by going again to Format and Style and choosing Section Cell and type Basic Input. Then again, hit your down arrow key or move your mouse under this section. Repeat this process to make four more section cells. We'll call number two freeform input, number three Wolfram language input, number four applying what we have learned, and then number five documentation and saving. So this is the quick overview of what we're gonna discuss in this video. So let's start with some basic input. Move your mouse under this section and then start typing 627 divided by three, which by default is an input cell. When we're finished, evaluate the calculation, hold down the shift key and the press enter at the same time, or a numeric keypad, just hit the enter key. When I do that, I see the result of 209. The input is tagged with in one and the output is tagged without one, each of which is marked with cell markers on the right to show our first input cell and our output cell. If you click anywhere in the blank space underneath the last result and start typing, we can enter our second calculation. This time, let's type 628 over 3. Hold down, shift, and enter again to evaluate, and now we have our second input and output cells in the notebook. Now, in this case, the result was just 628 over 3, the same as the input. By default, you'll see Mathematica will always provide the most exact answer. If we want to get a numerical approximation, there's multiple ways of doing that. Let's go ahead and just click the suggestions bar um, numerical value as an option, and Mathematica will create a third input which adds the Wolfram language function capital N to our input and numerically approximates 628 divided by 3. This third output shows that result. The next way to enter calculations is through what we call freeform input. Now, freeform input uses Wolfram Alpha technology to turn everyday English into something that Mathematica can understand and calculate. So again, click anywhere in this blank space so that you see the horizontal bar. This tells Mathematica we're ready to enter a new input cell. To create a freeform input cell, start by typing an equal sign, and Mathematica automatically makes this orange bounded box, which is the signal it's using the Wolfram Alpha technology. Now we can type something in everyday plain English. So let's type a graph sine of x divided by x. To evaluate freeform input, you can still hit shift enter or you can just hit the enter key. Um, since this is a freeform input cell, there is no carriage return or multi-line calculations or adding additional text or paragraphs, uh, so enter works fine. When you evaluate a freeform input cell, it connects through the internet to Wolfram servers and converts this expression into the proper Wolfram language command, but also, of course, provides you the result. Let's do another, let's say equal sign uh, pi to 100 digits, or you can solve a system of equations. We can say equal sign uh, solve 2x minus 7 equals 0 and 3x minus 2y equals 0 for x and y. Or we can do an integral. Let's do equal sign integral of 1 over quantity x cubed plus 1. But we can do lots and lots of math, simple and complex, but how about we do something that has more to do with data? So you can do things like um, all kinds of different data sets. Let's do a caffeine molecule. So I'm going to type equal sign picture of a caffeine molecule, and then we get that result as well. Now let's move on to the Wolfram language uh, type input. <clears throat> 
The main way to enter calculations into Mathematica is to use the built-in language called uh, the Wolfram language. Freeform input is really convenient and great for single calculations, but Wolfram language is way better for multiple calculations, intricate or multi-step calculations. It's also way more useful where you want to customize a calculation, like changing a color, a background, or theme of a plot, or adding labels, for example. I'll show a couple more examples, um, but let's go ahead and, and get started. So let's do capital P, so plot, open square bracket, 2x minus 7, comma, and then uh, open curly brace. We're going to say x goes from negative 10 to 10, and then close the brace and bracket. For Wolfram language, we always use shift enter to calculate, and we get that result. Now, you can always edit uh, inputs you've already created. So let's just go back up to the 2x minus 7 and, and modify that to 2x squared minus 7, and then hit shift enter again to see you can always modify what you've done previously. Let's do a new input cell. So we'll do plot 3D, open square bracket, and then we're going to do sign of x times y. Now to multiply uh, variables, you can do x space y or you can do x asterisk y. Either one is fine. Then we're going to say x goes from negative 3 to 3 and y goes from negative 3 to 3 and then hit shift enter. Now all 3D graphics in Mathematica like this one or again the caffeine molecule from earlier, you can rotate it, you can zoom in and out of it, so you have a lot of controls that you can then uh, illustrate that 3D graphic in any way you would like. Let's do our first multi-line input. So we're going to do table with a capital T of i cubed where i goes from 0 to 10. We'll close our brace and bracket. Then I'm going to use a semicolon. A semicolon suppresses the output, so I don't need to see that table of values. Then I'm going to hit the enter key and do a, a second line. We're going to say list plot, open square bracket, percent sign. And percent sign just means the last output. So I'm visualizing that table of i cubed that I made from uh, where i goes from 0 to 10. Let's do uh, one more of these. We're going to say mat1, so we're going to define our own variable. So you're seeing that with function names, they are they use a capital letter in Mathematica. So when I make my own variables, I use small letters. So I'm going to say mat1 equals, and I'm going to make a three by three matrix. So curly brace, and then a curly brace again, one, three, negative two, and then close that curly brace or that list, two, five, zero, and then negative three, negative five, seven, and then close that brace and then close the whole brace. So it's a list of lists is how the, the braces, you read that in plain English. And then you uh, type a semicolon again to suppress that output. I don't need to see that matrix. What I wanna calculate though is hit the enter key and then type capital DET for determinant of mat one and then close that bracket and then hit shift enter. And that calculates the whole thing for me and finds that determinant of negative 17. Now you'll notice mat1, if you noticed when you were typing along with me, um, mat1 was blue to start with because there was no definition for that variable. It was something that Mathematica didn't understand, um, but once I defined that variable, then it turned black, so then Mathematica and the Wolfram language knew that was a known variable. If you want to clear a variable, you can just type the word, the function clear with capital C, open square bracket, and then mat1 is the variable we want to clear, hit shift enter, and now you see mat1 goes back to blue and it is undefined. So what have we learned in this Wolfram language section? Well, there's four main things you need to know. You use capital letters to start all function names or multi-word functions have capital letter on each start of the word. Function arguments are enclosed by square brackets. Lists or ranges or domains are enclosed by curly braces. And then you hit shift enter to do a calculation um, or back in freeform input, you can just hit enter if you want. But enter also makes carriage returns. So you can make paragraphs and texts in like our hands-on start to Mathematica book. We wrote that entirely in Mathematica. So again, it's a great text editor and that's where the enter sign is used. Now let's click underneath uh, section four, which is applying what we've learned. So now that we have those basics in mind, let's create a simple interactive model using the function manipulate. And manipulate asks us to enter two things. It wants an expression or the thing you want to change. And then the second argument is a dynamic variable that specifies how you want to change the expression. So let's go ahead and do a freeform input. So we're gonna say equal sign uh, plot sine of X where X goes from zero to six pi with a y-axis from negative four to four. 
and then I get that Wolfram language uh, output. Now you'll notice if you put your mouse over the um, Wolfram language, it says, go ahead and update the input to this, that Wolfram language. And I wanna do that because I wanna go on to a next step with that. So go ahead and click that. Now, once we have that uh, inserted as our input, let's wrap the function manipulate around that plot. And uh, instead of sine of x, we want, to, we want to manipulate some new dynamic variable we'll, we'll call FREQ uh, for frequency. So sine of FREQ times x. And then at the very end, I'm going to define what FREQ is. So FREQ is defined going from the range of one to five. And then close that bracket and, and hit shift enter. And now we've made our first um, actual manipulate or or um, interactive model. Now the graph is recalculated and replotted each time I move that slider. And if you click this plus key, you'll notice some additional controls. So you can play it like animation, you can speed it up or slow it down, or you can type in a specific value for FREQ as well. Let's add a few more things to this manipulate. Um, so go ahead and highlight the entire statement and copy and paste it below. We're going to add uh, to this. So instead of one slider with one dynamic variable, we're going to add a second one called AMP. So AMP for amplitude um, here. And then with either a space or an asterisk to, de to denote multiplication. And then let's go ahead and replace sine with a third variable. Let's call that FUNC for function. Uh, and for that, we'll create a list of functions to choose from. So let's move to the end of the statement and we need to define the range for that second dynamic variable. Um, so amp will say goes from one to four and then the list of functions for func. So we'll say func can be defined as the list of sine, cosine and tangent. We'll close those braces and brackets, hit down, hit uh, shift enter to evaluate. And then we see a full model with two sliders, um, both for frequency and amplitude. And then the buttons to let us select the trig function we want to use as well. So manipulate is a really powerful function and can be used to adjust parameters of a calculation or visualization in real time, uh, perfect for exploring concepts across various levels and disciplines. And in fact, it's such a popular function, we've created a website called the Wolfram Demonstrations Project that contains thousands and thousands of these models that other Mathematica users have created and shared. And you can access that at demonstrations.wolfram.com. It's a great resource for academia, for trying to teach a concept, or in the commercial space where you're trying to under, uh, explain concepts to colleagues uh, in, a, in a visual uh, dynamic way as well. Go ahead and click under the last section we made, which was documentation saving. So, the, so with documentation, the primary way to access the help system is through the documentation. If you're using Mathematica on the desktop, you can go to the help drop down menu and choose Wolfram documentation. Or if you're in Mathematica online, just click the documentation icon at the top right of the screen. Now, once in the documentation, you can search on specific commands or on the main homepage, uh, you can click to learn different areas like visualizations and graphics or strings and text or machine learning. In this case, let's do a search for the built-in function plot. Now, the nice thing about the documentation is it not only contains thousands of examples, but it lets you do these calculations live. So you can go to the first example, this plot of uh, sine of x as x goes from 0 to 6 pi, and let's just change the x to 2 times x, and then hold down shift enter to reevaluate it. Any changes you make in the documentation won't be saved. So don't worry, it's a great way to just tinker and play with things and learn the Wolfram language, but you won't ruin or break anything either. And once you make a calculation you like, you can go ahead and copy and paste that and move that back to your notebook. Uh, so you have that as a finished product to move forward with as well. Every built-in function in Mathematica and the Wolfram language has its own documentation page, so it's really easy to get a feel for what the functions do, and there are a lot of nice examples on how to use them also. In our last minute, I just want you to make sure you save your notebook. So if you're using Mathematica locally, click the file drop down menu and choose save or save as. And then if you're using Mathematica online in the top left corner, you'll see that your notebook is called unnamed. Uh, click unnamed, type in a new name and click that check mark to the right to save it. Mathematica online will automatically save your notebook as you make changes going forward. Um, but with Mathematica desktop, you need to do that manually. So just click, you know, control S every once in a while to save that.
So again, now that you've learned the basics, I invite you to explore our hands-on start resources. And a good next step is to register for one of those tutorial sessions. It is live one hour, and it'll teach you more about the Wolfram language, how to work with data, create more of these interactive models, uh, and how to share your work with others. And then during the session, you'll work alongside with me in your own copy of Mathematica, and you can ask questions and get answers in real time. And then with the book, of course, that's a great resource to learn more about the topics we cover in this video and the live training. Uh, plus a whole lot more. So thank you for joining me. Uh, I hope you enjoy discovering Mathematica for yourself, and I look forward to seeing you at one of our webinars.